Now you have to look at me for 40 minutes. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm not on the screen where you can just turn me off. And leave. <laughs> so we do welcome you back. This is the way it was set up, so that's the way we're going to leave it for today. But hopefully, uh, probably in a couple of weeks, we might just have the tables back out. If you want to sit close, if you need to sit apart this morning, there's a couple, that's fine. If you want to sit together, that's fine too. But some of the social distancing might be a blessing this morning, I guess. <laughs> Stay at <the> arm's reach. <laughs> All right, any prayer requests this morning? Any prayer requests? Honey's on the road picking up some grandkids. Okay. I'll have them this week. How's the job search with all this stuff going on? Is it just non existent or has she got it up in her work? She's yeah. working one week on and one week off. That's why she's got next week off. Oh, okay. So she did she did get a job finding time. She got a job down at Pukeway at South Bend. They make uh, commercial appliances. Oh, cool. Okay. Pukeway, oh, that's a little bit of a road. Yeah, we're we were looking at moving again, but right now we're staying where we're at. So. Okay. Traffic was, I mean, it's been light, so. Yeah. Okay, well, good. That's good to know. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, sure. Um, I got a call from my sister last night. She, um, they were, I mean, she's paralyzed, so they were moving her into a wheelchair. We put her to bed and the cord broke. And um, she hit the bed in the, in the floor. And she, her guardian, which is her sister in law, called me That's great. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's a blessing. Thanks for prayer. And uh, let's see. Miss Jenny, please keep praying for her. She's got blood work tomorrow. And she's gone. She went Thursday and Friday, and they didn't have the order. They had her walking all over the place Thursday. And it's Ron Bill and Ron Bill. And Tina, uh, Tina thought I had to get a shuttle to take her to one building, and then, and then they didn't have the order, and then they didn't have it. So they're going to go. Okay. Anyone else this morning? Prayer request, Travis. I pray for Doug. I'm not feeling well this morning. Um, <clears throat> Michelle, DOT furlough, furloughed her for. I just fancy for she just got to cut her cut her hours back. And she's not going to get paid for. I think she's cut by like 20 hours or something mm -hmm. like that. But she still has a job. Uh, but DOT is. Always been running, mismanaging their money, I guess, or whatever. So they're always in the news anyway. So, okay. We were talking yesterday. Many people are still not back to work. I was like, who? I mean, but I guess there are still people. We were talking about the daycare, and still not the numbers are not coming back as far as what they were before the, um, the virus shut down. <clears throat> so pray about that. Pray about the new school year. Summer program, uh, Bible school is not in the bulletin, but it is third week. It was scheduled, tentatively scheduled for third week of June. So, as far as I know, still is. Uh, the church conference is a Wednesday, this coming Wednesday week, not this Wednesday, but the week for this coming Wednesday, election of officers and um, the budget, approved the budget. And, uh, so, pray that goes well. What else is going on this morning? Riots, yeah, it's like wall to wall coverage last night in Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, breaking windows, burning stuff. Um, you know, just a, another divisive uh, event in our country. So I pray that we'll just stay safe and no one else will get hurt. Um, it, it just, uh, yeah. And I think that I think that has more to do with it than any of us want to admit. 
that are there are powers that be that would do anything for the current president not to be the current president not to be president again so and there's money there's a lot of money behind it that we wouldn't even think about that is being spent to um, make put him in a bad light no matter what he does he's wrong and uh, it's sad but you know it's going to be like that we we me and melinda talked about think it's bad now what's it going to be like in the end times what's it going to be like when those of us that do pray and those that us that uh are christian and and uh do uh because of god's mercy hold back uh satan's rule and reign in the air prince and power of the air powers that he can have what's it going to be like when that spirit is gone and people just if, if it's last night multiplied by the world that's what you saw. People are going to be a mess. I'm glad we're going to be gone. We need to be sure we witness and try to uh, show people that there is a different, there's a better way. There's a, there is hope after this world. There's, there's a life after this world. So We are being recorded this morning. Travis is going to put us on YouTube. I saw myself on YouTube this past week. Our previous uh, Facebook Live messages have been I guess edited and put over there. Come on in. Come on in. It's still grow. Uh, if social distance, if you need social distancing in your family this morning, leave the chairs where you are. If you don't, you can put them together and we will not report you. <laughs> we will not report you. And you can grab another chair or pull one up, whichever we need to do. And, uh, Sorry. Brandon's got it, I think. Well, your wife's got it. Sorry. And it is good I to see you, brother. <laughs> you still working from home, bro? Yes, good. So far. Well, I mean, is that that's good? I, I don't know. They told me to stay put until the end of June. We'll see what happens. Hey, <laughs> praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. You know, if it's uh, just not hurting finances, you know, or not stressing you out too bad to be working at home, you know. Uh, no, I'm saying, you know, you know I'm, not, I'm not saying. Okay. <laughs> He needs to do no. <laughs> I need a door. <laughs> it's in the dining room, so it's kind of wild. <laughs> you can imagine. It's, it's different, yeah. It's I'm different. sure. So, uh, yeah, it's good to see y'all. We're glad you're here. People are still working at home. And who knows what we'll have uh, between now and if they'll ever be back to normal. You think about the airlines after 9-11, it's never been back to where it was before. And I don't know about this as far as as far as what this how far back we can get things back to what we would think would be normal, what we grew up with. So or what we were used to. So just keep praying. The Lord's in control. He knows mm -hmm. what he's doing. He knows exactly what's going on and why it's happening and when it's going to happen. And, uh, just trust him. All right, well, let's get our Bibles out. We're going to start a little early. We might have, we got about five more minutes before we just uh, keep praying for our preacher. Or, um, we had our budget meeting yesterday, and he was very tired yesterday. I don't know if I've ever, if I've noticed, I've noticed that he was very tired. He seemed to be very tired. But this morning, he seemed spry and alert. So, <laughs> just us old folks. We can bounce back. So pray for Gloria and Robert. They're not here this morning. Uh, who else is not here? Tra uh, the, Andersons. the Andersons are still in Texas. Still in Texas. Texas. They might come back with a southern draw a little bit. More southern draw than normal. But I hope they're having a big time down there. Uh, Miss Burgess is not here. Who else is not here? Dennis and Lisa, yeah. I saw him yesterday. So Dave, hopefully we'll be around. So I'm trying to remember but it's hard to know you're not in your seats. <laughs> you know, you're not around your table where you should be. We do welcome Todd Danny with the us this morning. Woo! How's, how's uh, the job search going? Job Man. search is still in the process. It's difficult when you can't actually go into the place and communicate with them. Uh, doing some stuff online is, is better right now. So we're just kind of in the process right now. Definitely have the ideas of what we need to do, so we're 
Amen. So just pray that everything goes smoothly. Yeah, pray for housing for Todd and his son. Definitely a seller's market, I guess you'd call them, because they are few and far between, and rents are, are exorbitant. I'm sure the annex is getting crowded a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just laughs. He laughs at me. So. <laughs> All right. Well, there's oh food. Uh, went to the eye doctor Friday, and he, she told me she said you can't see me right now. I said I know. She said you've got a cataract. You've got to take out, get taken out. I said okay. So they got to get that scheduled, and uh, thank Lord it's just in one eye, and we get that fixed. We just pray about that. I don't want. I've only got one spare. I don't know how many you got, but I only got one spare. So if you lose one, then you're definitely down to your last. All right, open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5 this morning. Chapter 5 of Galatians. We're, we're talking about several different items about warring and about uh, living in this world that we're living in. And we look at one of our biggest enemies today outside of the uh, world and the devil uh, we look at one of our constant that's with us always forever and a day uh, is with us and the only time that it won't be with us is when we're no longer in it and we're talking about the flesh uh, Galatians 5 and verse 17 down through verse 21 is where we'll start for our text this morning uh, if you don't have any problem with yourself this morning, if you looked in the mirror and you were pretty straight and sharp this morning and felt good and uh, had all your uh, teeth and, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you didn't have any problems with yourself, then pat yourself on the back. You know, I don't see anybody reaching and I wouldn't think anybody would because we're, we're modest enough that we'd love to do that. But it is a constant problem. We, uh, it's one of those things the Bible talks about. We see ourselves in the mirror and then we turn away and we're Elvis. Or we're a movie star. If you're a lady, you might be a famous movie star or whatever it might be. We don't we don't uh, see ourselves as we really are uh, because it's not really very pretty sometimes. And the Bible tells us this morning it's not. When we talk about warring against the flesh, warring with the flesh, uh, every day we have to battle this. So let's look in seventeen, uh, verse seventeen of chapter five, Galatians. Now through verse 21, then we have a word of prayer and we get into our uh, lesson. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, that you, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's how we're prayer. We'll stop right there and get back and get right into the lesson. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us, the opportunity we have to be in your house, to be with your people, Lord, and, and in person. We just thank you for that today. Uh, we're not at home and we're sitting around our computers or phones, Lord, we're actually. Uh, together, we just thank you for that it is a privilege and some honor. I pray that you'll help me today, Lord, not to use any of this time unwisely or selfishly. And I pray that your word will be what per, uh, permeates this time and, and the minds and the spirits of the people that are here. Thank you for those that have come out, Lord, uh, this morning to, to be in Sunday school. Thank you for those that might watch later on, on, on online on the computer, uh, and Lord, those that might listen. In other ways, we just pray we'll bless each and everything that's said that it might work according to your will in the hearts and the lives of the hearers. We just pray we'll bless, Lord, those needs that were lifted up. You know each heart and life. You know how best to meet the needs that were mentioned and the unspoken ones, Lord, also according to your will. We pray your will be done. We look for the blessings. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, come on in. Come on in now. We've already said, I'll say it again, if you need social distancing in your family, just uh, leave the chairs where they're at if you can, can figure out how to get together. And uh, then uh, you can pull the chairs together and I will not report you. Nobody in the room will report you this morning. Good to see y'all. I'm excited this morning. I actually get to speak and I get to see, you know, the, the reaction on your face tells me uh, where we're going. It tells me where we're at. And I could not see that in the weeks past. So I only had to go on the fact that you were there and you were smiling and you were happy with what was being said but now i can read your face and there's no uh 
There's no speaker that ever doesn't read faces and see where he's at and to see if he needs to jump up and down or if he needs to make a funny face or whatever. But so we look at the flesh. We're in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17 this morning. Down through verse 21 is where we're going to start. And I'm going to tell you, of all the battles that we face, I believe it's the flesh that trips us up the most. We, uh, we, deceives our, we deceive ourselves more often than Satan can deceive us. We deceive ourselves more often than the world can deceive us. Because as we look at the works of the flesh, and we see that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, do you realize that battle, without anything else, that battle goes on every day. The spirit of God as it says in other places in the Bible, lust is to envy, to have us, to be in us, to control us. And so the flesh wars in the same manner against the spirit. And that is a battle before you add any of the other things we'll see this morning. And that is a constant battle. It's a battle that sometimes we don't even, we deceive ourselves and we don't even realize is going on. But the flesh, the spirit lusted against the spirit. A spirit blesses against the flesh, the flesh against the spirit. And these are contrary the one to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not in the law. Uh, and we see those works. And we deceive ourselves so many times because we look at these words and we think, well, that's not me. I don't commit adultery. I'm not envious. I'm not a fornicator. I'm not unclean. I'm, I don't. Dealing less cheesiness. I don't even know what that means. Tell you the truth. I needed to have looked it up and understand it. Anybody know? Raise your hand. Tell me real quick. We'll go. Okay, I didn't think so. But you can tell me later. But we think, I, I'm not into idolatry. You know, how's your, how is it that you're, never mind, I won't even go there because you, know, you, you might have a perfectly whatever I was going to say. And you would think, well, he thinks I'm an idolater. But we, we, uh, we, we, all of these things, you know, we could spend probably a few minutes on each one, and I can tell you that it would probably hit the nail on the head for in all areas probably in my life, and so at some point, at some level, and uh, I could probably make you feel very uncomfortable this morning if we went through this and really dug into these things, and I would be very uncomfortable even thinking of it in my life, but we get so hung up on, if we're not idolatrous, if we're not idolaters, then why is it the fads of the world coming to the church? Why is it that the next thing, the next, uh, the next VHS player? I'm gonna go back a little bit. <laughs> See, I'm really, I'm taking the, I'm taking it, I'm taking the pressure off of you this morning. If that next VHS hi-fi player is not on our list of wants to desires to where we have got to have it, because all my friends have it, then, then well, we don't have a no problem with our doctors, do. Or if that, and I hope. If that next, next gadget consumes our thoughts, is that not does that not lend and tend itself to idolatry? Uh, or maybe that next uh, kitchen appliance. Uh, I don't know. But I'm, I'm saying in all these areas, we look at these words, and they're strong words, and we think, oh, no, that's not me. We look at the mirror, and we say, oh, no, that's not me. Well, I'm pretty good this morning. I'm all right. And we go away from that, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, throughout our day, we probably, we would not, we would not realize, we probably don't realize how many times in one day's period of time that we've come close to all of these things. In some way or another, we're affected by them. So we need to be careful and realize that, that it is a war. Uh, Jesus warned Peter, we won't turn there, in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Remember, Peter was the one that, he was very bold. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never turn my back on you. And we know, we've seen how Peter uh, fell many times. We use him as an example of what not to do, but he was still a very courageous man. Uh, he walked on the water with Christ, and then, of course, we know he slipped. Uh, and he started to sink. But, but his, and his spirit, and so many times that's us too. Our spirit is definitely, we know what's right. All of us in this room know what's right, don't we? Shake your head, yes. Wake up, shake your head, yes. We know what's right. But doing what's right, we fail oftentimes because of the weakness of our flesh. 
And you know, the Bible talks about there, there is pleasure in sin for a season. But there's always a consequence. There's always a, a result of the sin that we allow ourselves to get into. And it's a problem. But it's a lot of times because the flesh is weak. And we are bombarded 24-7 uh, with ads and with programs and with policies and with things that appeal to the flesh. So maybe we, uh, even, let's put it back, let's draw, draw it back a little bit. Maybe we don't go visiting like we should. Maybe we don't read our Bibles like we should. Maybe we're not praying as we should. That's easy. That's uh, examples of every day, the things that we need to do. We, a lot of times we fail right off the bat from those. Also, Jesus warned in John chapter 6 and verse 63 that the, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that makes us alive. It's the spirit that brings light and life and understanding. You know, sometimes we wonder, what in the world's going on? Why am I, why am I so distraught? Why am I so uh, just in anxiety? Why do I, why do I, why am I so, you know, just, you know what I'm saying. And, and a lot of times it's because we're allowing things to come into our lives that are, uh, the flesh brings in things that man are just contrary to the spirit. And then we, we don't have that life. We don't see that light of the Spirit. We don't have the understanding of the Spirit because we're blocking it out with these things that we're allowing to come into our lives. Maybe that's why we're you know, wringing our hands. Maybe that's why we're in constant turmoil in our lives because we have allowed the flesh to take over. Nothing good. There's nothing good uh, in the flesh. Look, look, let's look in Romans. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now, verses 8 through 8, uh, 13. Y'all are mighty quiet this morning. I know you don't have the tables there to lean on the front of them, but we need to. Y'all get with me. Come here. Come on back, back in the room. Come back in the room, okay? Uh, <laughs> didn't hear you, that's okay. So, chapter 8 of Romans, verse 8, down through verse 13. Paul taught us that in the flesh we cannot please God. Does that mean we can't please God? I, I think we I think we can please God, but we can't please Him outside of the Spirit, working through the flesh. Uh, there, there, in a, in a, in a, with a sweet place in Romans chapter eight. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And he answered what I was trying to say. I should have read to start with. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be, if so be, read that. See that. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And then in verse down through verse 13, but the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, and he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also uh, raise up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live so you see where our hope is you see where our light you see where our understanding is going to come from is from the spirit let's look right up those that are in the flesh uh, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God so if you stop right there we would all be doomed we would all not have a chance to please God we wouldn't stand a chance no, I, no, no way no how but he explains it. He says, but if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if I was to ask you this morning, if you're saved, all of you would raise your hand. Yes, sir, I'm saved. Well, that means the spirit is in you. The spirit comes in, we believe. And if you're not familiar with this, which I know you are, we believe that the moment of salvation, you get all the Holy Spirit you're going to get. You get 100% you get of the spirit of God. It's all there. It's all one package. It all comes in all at one time. When you confess your sins, trust in Christ as your Savior, it all comes in. So you have that. So all of you would say, well, I've got the Spirit. So it dwells in you. And he says, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Do you see that? You see where our life is at then. You see, you see there in that verse that that is the really the only life that we should strive for, the only life that we 
can have that will please God is in the Spirit. <clears throat> so we, we have to allow that Holy Spirit to control, to please God. And if we don't, and allow the flesh to take over, you see, I said we get all that Holy Spirit that we're going to get. And the amount of control that we give that Holy Spirit determines how we how much we please God. If we allow the flesh to control, then that spirit is squelched. It's still there. All of it's still there. But it's the power of the Spirit that we've got to have working in our lives to please God. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Verse 13, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And that is the battle. That is the constant battle we face every day. Who am I going to let control me today? We get up in the morning, we pray, we, we read our Bible, we're doing good as a Christian, we're going and we get ready for work, we're looking forward to the day that God's given us. We get on 540 and we're going along and everything's fine and then this idiot cuts us off! And I'm like, oh, you idiot, what are you doing? What happened? What happened? <laughs> Uh, we, all of a sudden, from the spirit to the flesh, within a matter of a turn of the wheel. Oh, and, and you've never done that. I know you've never done that. You've never called anybody an idiot. You've never, when he pulled in front of you, hit the gas and say, buddy, watch this. I'll get right on your bumper. Do a little drafting. I watch this. Boom, I'll go around you, buddy. I got more power. <laughs> Then wave at it because you got like idiot. <laughs> You've never done that. You've never done that, I'm sure. I'm just speaking to me. But that is how quickly. That's how quickly it can shift. And it happens, oh, it happens so fast. And it and it's so it's so in our minds, it's so justified. That idiot cut me off. I'm justified. I won't bring up him. We're justified in what we do it's because the flesh rationalizes it. It makes us feel in control or whatever it might be. And, and I'm sure there's been other times, and I'm serious, that that guy has cut you off. You said, Lord, and you just back off. Say, Lord, please help that guy have a better day. I'm having a good day. I don't want to mess it up now. I'm not going to let the flesh take over. I'm just going to be cool with this. And, I'll get to work still on time. Oh, okay. You know? So I know that's happened in your life too. But it's in those instances we have a choice. We make that choice. And so many times that flesh just comes in and whew, it's all over. But the Christians have no confidence in the flesh. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3. We'll move on as we see the problems with the flesh. And there is problems. There's problems, I tell you. Philippians chapter 3, if you'll turn there, please. And verses uh, 1 through 3. <clears throat> we'll look at those. It says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, it is indeed, is not grievous, but for, your, for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of, of uh, the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in flesh. Notice. Look over in uh, chapter 6. We were there earlier. Well, we were on chapter 5. We're going to go to chapter 6 and verse 14. How do we have, how do we have victory over the flesh? But God forbid that I should glory, save to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I to the world. We have to be crucified to the world. Our three three pronged enemy is the world, the flesh, and the devil. Um, and here it tells us how to take care, really, of, of all of it. Because we're in this world, we're not of this world. But it says that I should glory. Now, when we when we had that list of long, ugly words that were the works of the flesh, uh, when we started out, if we glory in those things, then the flesh is going to control. The flesh is going to have the power. But if we glory in the cross of Christ, how can he not have control? How, how can the spirit not lead us? If we think of, of Christ and the cross and what he did for us, 
and bring it back down just to that one act, that one thing. It can control your day if you let it. Regardless of what other scripture you know, which helps and which is important, but bring it back down. Jesus Christ saved my sorry self. And he saved you too. Were we worthy? No. Did I deserve it? No. Did I earn it? No. Did I have anything to do with it? No. Man, he saved me. He saved me. He forgave me. He saved me. How can I not let the Spirit have control? How can I not live for him each and every day? I will live. He's promised me eternity, a home in heaven, everything. And yet, so many times I let the old I let the guy cut me off, and boy, I just jump right into the rage. I forget about what he's done for me. Victory over the flesh. If I'm going to glory in anything, I should glory only in the cross of Christ and what he did for me and what he did for you. It'll make a difference in our lives if we will. And we are to walk in the Spirit. Let's look at Galatians. We'll still stay there. We'll still be in chapter 5. Go back to chapter 5 where we were. But just a, uh, another list. Another list of things. Another list of the, you know what it is, it's the fruit of the Spirit. Remember a couple of weeks ago, and I'm really just in my Christian life in the last year, I've, I've been taught this and learned this. The fruit of the Spirit is one fruit. If it was an apple, it would be a whole apple. If it was a pear, it'd be a whole pear. If it was a, your, your favorite fruit, it would be that. It's not, it's not six or eight different fruits laying around. It's, it's one thing all in one. It's all one thing. I, I'd be interested to see what God might have related that to. If he's got a perfect fruit of the Spirit that would have all these attributes, might be interested to see. But if we walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5 and verse 24, well, let's start 22. But the fruit of the Spirit. Now, we had that list of ugly words that we don't want to think about, that we're not anything close to. I'm never close to any of those. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not... Perfect, but I'm not any of those other words up there in verses 17 through 21. No, sir, not me. Uh -uh. I'm not. No, I'm not. That's what we say in the mirror. And we walk away and that guy cuts us off as I was talking about. But verse 22 talks about, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no love. Now those words, we really like to look in the mirror and say, yeah, love, peace, joy. I got it. I got it all. It's all there. It's all just one good thing. We deceive ourselves sometimes, but we need to live. And they that are Christ, in verse 24, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. How do we have victory over the flesh? Well, we look at those ugly words, as I'll call them, in verses 17 through 21, and we really consider how close we are, how involved we got in those into those things, maybe the previous day or the previous hour, the previous minute. And then we look at these words of these, this list of good words, joy, peace, love, long suffering, meekness, temperance, uh, against such there is none. We think, hmm, that is a whole lot, that's a whole lot more pleasant list of words, isn't it? That's who, that's who I want to be. When I pass people, when I meet people, that's what I want to bring out is love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, patience, uh, all those things that are the fruit of the Spirit. That's what I want people to remember me by. I don't want to remember, remember me when they see me. Now, how would it be? Think about this. That guy cuts me off. I really rail against him. I blow the horn. I fuss at him. Whatever it might be. And then Sunday comes. Guess who walks into Sunday school? Into my class. And then you may think, oh, that's, but I have, I have actually thought about this. I look at people and I, and I think, man, he is weird. And I think, I'll just use he for that. But I think about, I think about what if he walked into Sunday school, into my class? How, how would I greet him? What would I think of him then? You know? So we need to, we need to apply this fruit, this fruit. To our life each and every day because we never know when we're going to meet those people again. We never know when we have the opportunity possibly to witness to them. And if he's the guy to cut me off, how's that house? Hey, we really love you. We want you to come and be saved. 
Oh, yeah, you're the, you're the guy to cut me off, the guy that I cut off. I was wrong, but you, man, you railed against me. How am I going to listen to you now? So it is our witness that needs to match our words and our actions. And if we will allow the fruit of the Spirit, there's so much. And if you think about it, if you really, come here, if you really think about it, aren't they a whole lot easier and less stressing than the list from in verses 17 through 21? Aren't they a whole lot more pleasing? Aren't they just easier to, to understand and to take in and to and just be so much more relaxing if that fruit is there? Those other words are harsh and they're 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 tensing and they're they're stressful and they're like oh they tie, they make you make you just it mean <laughs> they make you just mean but you look at the list of words of the fruit of the spirit and it's like man that is that is peace that is joy that's that's easy that's a lot easier crucify the flesh crucify the flesh walk in the spirit be filled with the spirit and bear the fruit of the spirit in twenty two verse twenty three that we just looked at there so we must remember that that. Uh, that there's some positive things about the flesh that we live in. Here's a spin on it. Now stay with me. First Corinthians uh, 10. Let's turn there. We'll finish up there. That's what we'll be. First Corinthians chapter 10. We may go to 15 also. First Corinthians chapter 10. Some positive things about the flesh. I've just spoke of how the flesh is all those ugly things and hard things and stressful things. But look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand to take heed, lest he fall. There hath no, let, read this, read, look at it, okay? You got it? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. In other words, what you're facing, been around for years. God already knows it. He's already dealt with it. You're not going to face anything new you don't know about. But such is called a man, but God is faithful. Everybody say amen right there. Amen. God is faithful. Even when I'm not faithful, even when I do get in the flesh, even when I rail against the guy, God is faithful. Where'd it go? Oh, wait a minute. Where'd it go? Oh, I'm wrong. Okay. Sorry. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able? But with the temptation almost, oh, oh, well, Temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So, positive things about the flesh. God knows about our temptations and our weaknesses. And guess what? He's made a way to escape it. That is the, that's something to ponder on. Uh, because I've used God to cut me off. Or that possibly, I didn't know what it didn't happen. But anyway, that, that I want to put out there. Always there's a way to not let the flesh take over. There's always a way out. There's always a, a better way to equal, to get to the results of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance. There's always an escape. Do you believe the Bible? Yeah. So, when we mess up and we allow flesh to take over, whose fault is it? Mm -hmm. It's ours. It's mine. You know? There was a way. And, and, and we, when, when we really we mess up and we look back at it and we think, I remember when that side road came up. I remember when that escape came up. I know exactly. And I won't guarantee you every time. You'll know exactly where you get off path and where you allow the flesh to take over. That's why we've got to be so filled with the Spirit that we see that and then not only see it and understand it and know it and, and not just ponder it and look at it, yeah, there's the escape. There's the escape. Yeah, there's the escape, but there's the escape. And we've got to not only look at it, see it, and know it, but we've got to be able to have the Spirit control us to where we take it. We use that escape. Because don't sit here and, and, and make me think or make God think that you're above all this. You're not. I'm not. You're going to face it every day. Take the escape route. Take the escape that God's given you. Don't allow the flesh to take over. I'm talking to me too. Don't allow it to take over. God's made a way. Now, if, if you ever have, and I hope you have, 
I mean, and I have in circumstances I can think of. I've taken that exit. And boy, I see the disaster. I see the car wreck. I see the horrible situation that would have been. And I say, thank God. Thank God he allowed me. He, I let, His spirit took control. And I took that escape route. He knows our temptations and our wind. He'll provide a way to escape. And then, hallelujah, in verse 15, we'll finish up with Ruth. I know you're tired of hearing me probably rant ready, but just trying to help you. I'm sure you're thinking, I don't know, I don't know this. This is just a, this is just one I can put on the back burner. No, it's not. I'm sorry. I know better. You know better. Verse 15, chapter 15, 1 Corinthians 58. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, now, and that's, this is the ultimate escape. This is the ultimate, the ultimate relief will be when we're transformed from this body to a glorified body. And hallelujah in heaven, we will never have to battle the flesh again. Won't that be nice? Yeah. Not to even have those thoughts, not to even have that situation, not to have anything to come in to cause us to get into the flesh. Well, that's going to be him. That's going to be out of this world. It is. So therefore, because of all these things, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So this morning, I hope, I hope I've said something that you'll think about today. Well, you'll think about tomorrow. And, and, and here it comes. Here it it's the temptation. It's the flesh. And the flesh is like, yeah, that piece of pie. <laughs> oh, that's going to be so good. And I'm using that as a silly example. But all of a sudden we realize, oh, you know, I am already. Whew, I don't really need that piece of pie. And it would be so good not to eat that piece of pie. And they're, oh, there's somebody else here. You have a piece of pie. You take it because I don't really want it. Thank you, Lord. Or is it going to be, oh, man, this is good pie. <laughs> I, I I encourage you to, to take the route. Take the escape. Use the escape route. Use that escape. Overcome the flesh. Your day will be better. My day will be better because of it. And possibly your, you know, your night too. So living in the flesh, we're, we, we have no choice. But we do have a choice in how we live in it. Who we let control. Spirit the flesh. Let's pray. Father, well, thank you all for morning. You have this opportunity to be in your word. It's been a blessing. It's just been a blessing to teach, Lord, and, and to see people, Lord. Just the opportunity to be together. It's just a blessing. We thank you for that. Pray, Lord, that you'll just help us each and every day to really look at our lives and really look at what's going on around us. And Father, we'll really look for that escape route. We'll be longing for it. We'll be looking for it. How do I how do I overcome this? How do I? And Father, you'll supply it if we'll let the Spirit lead. And thank you for that, Lord. You've given us a way. To overcome is possible. We'll not be perfect, but Father, we'll, we'll be able to look at that love, love, joy, peace, long suffering. And Lord, our life will be so much more peaceful, less stressful, and more focused on you than we could ever imagine. Just pray the blessed Lord and service that follows in all this time. We might lift up Jesus Christ and the preacher Lord might bring forth the message. Souls might be saved. Christians might be stirred to serve. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.